All right, YouTube, we have a special matchup today that I have to talk about why we're ha it's happening in the first place. I'll try and remember to put a spot in the video to jump straight to the gameplay if you guys want to, but we need to get into a bit of a mistake that I made. As you guys know, we recently ran the Fear Fest Jr. Thank you for the prime Adam Hippo, by the way, sneaking into the YouTube video. We ran Fear Fest Jr., which was a very exclusive invite-only tournament in which I had four people that were in part of it. Moxie, Nupo, Nass, and Drally. Four of the players that I felt like were the most recent top players. But because of that, I announced another tournament. A tournament that's happening today and tomorrow called One Shining Moment. You guys are trying to squeeze your way into this hype train and the YouTube video right now. Thank you, Yureki, for the gifted subs. <laughs> I'll, I'll thank everybody for more after. But anyways... I announced One Shining Moment. One Shining Moment, a tournament for $500, single elimination, 16 players. The idea is to get more people involved so that we could find out if somebody is better than the four people I invited. Who knows? Maybe somebody's been working shopping on their game and I didn't know about it. But I was going to allow anybody who wanted to play, which includes the four players who played in the previous tournament. So Moxie responded to that with eyes emoji. Now, I don't know about you guys, but eyes emoji to me... Usually it means you want to play. And I figured Moxie did. He's basically down for a tournament whenever. So yesterday, I hit up Moxie. Because I noticed he hasn't signed up. And he hasn't followed up for this tournament past just sending the eyes emoji. So I said, yo, do you want to play? Uh, are you interested in playing the tournament tomorrow? Uh, and he's like, yeah. What, what time is it? Of course I want to play. I'm like, it starts at 7 p.m. Central European Standard Time. Now, for me, that's 10 a.m., and that'll be important as we look through the screenshots. So, 10 a.m. Pacific time, where I'm at, that is when Moxie is preparing to play tomorrow, right? You guys would look through this right here, and you would say, okay, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central European Standard Time, that's when you should play. That's today. So, Moxie messages me today at 10.02 Two minutes after he should be starting his tournament, according to what we talked about. And I said, oh, dude, the games aren't the games aren't starting yet. The games start tomorrow. The European version of the tournament is tomorrow, and the North American version is today. If we go back to my original tweet, you'll see that I have North America on Monday, European, Middle East, and Africa on Tuesday. So sometimes when there's a mix-up, you know, we go back and forth. He said, you told me, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. I did. Sometimes when there's a mix-up, it's not a big deal. Let's say Moxie was sitting at home and playing Rocket League anyways. That was his plan for today. Then I wouldn't feel too bad because he would just play it tomorrow. And that, I feel like that happens on occasion. And I definitely am at fault. There's no question that I said tomorrow, which was a complete accident. I was thinking of the North American tournament. Moxie wouldn't be playing until the next day. But the problem is that Moxie wasn't just sitting on Rocket League. Moxie was not just sitting waiting to play he was at the beach with his friends. <laughs> he was hanging out with his friends at the beach and specifically left them in order to come back and play the tourney. He wanted to get here on time and he showed up, it seemed like maybe two minutes after the start time, in order to play, which of course I felt bad about, real bad. And then he went further on to show me even more about how he rushed back. He had a rush on the train. He was sticky. He did not... He, he, was, he was not in a position to be playing Rocket League. And I think this next screenshot even shows you his, uh, his one of the Ubers he had to get. He, he, was, he was absolutely on a mad dash to get home on time for the tournament that I told him would be today at 10 a.m. my time. And you can see we're discussing about this at 10.32 my time. So 30 minutes after he was expecting to start to play and not only that to give you guys even further proof because i want to give you guys all the juicer content here is some proof of moxie hanging out today with his friends what he ditched whoa, whoa, whoa. in order to be part of this tournament <laughs> so there's his first cliff jump you know just hanging out if you thought that one was cool he sent me a couple different cliff jumps moxie just wanted to have some fun today Hang out with his buds. Maybe go, you know, eat some dinner with them. But instead, he came back to play. First off, those are those are big jumps, man. <laughs> those are some seriously big jumps. But he gave up on all of that to play my tournament. Only 
my tournament is not available today. And he both can't play North America, which is what I was going to let him do if he wanted to, which is in a few hours. Or I was going to let him play tomorrow, of course, still, but he can't play tomorrow either. So I said, Moxie, I'm going to make it up to you. I'm going to find somebody for you to play a show match in right now who will play for $500. I'm going to give you a specific show match just for yourself for $500. In fact, you didn't play against Nupo, and that would be a good match. Maybe we'll see if Nupo wants to play, and Nupo does. So that is how we got our game today. We're trying to make Moxie's trip home worth it because I did not want to rob him of his time with his friends for no reason. And there's no question that I did DM him saying it was tomorrow, which of course is today. So that is how we have gotten to this match. Chat, here we go. If you skipped ahead to the gameplay, just look over at the chat. They'll explain to you everything, I'm sure. But we have Moxie versus Nupo in a best of seven. This is the one matchup that we didn't get, and I expect a matchup that a lot of people would have predicted to be the final of Fear Fest Jr., but it is not. And instead, we're going to see how it goes today. I really like this Fennec from Moxie. I feel like this color is one that nobody ever uses, and it looks cool. I like the Moxie fashion sense recently, which has just been running this white Octa or white this white Fennec, and then just putting whatever on top of it, whatever color on top. But anyways, Nupo up to zero. He's coming off of a tournament win after bracket resetting Drally. He had three matches against Drally in the tournament, but also a win over Nass as well, or two wins over Nass, I think. So he avoided Moxie completely. The last time these guys played, there was a little bit of beef. But I think that we aren't going to see that today, if I had to expect. I feel like it's going to be a much cleaner matchup. Moxie going to try and dash his way back to net here. Lupo is just in the zone right now. Moxie did specifically say that he really likes playing 1v1 tournaments. That's one of the reasons why he rushed back to play this one. And so unfortunately, I wasn't able to create an entire tournament today due to my mistake. But I did at least get him a match. And I think we as 1v1 fans, and I've talked about this before, but I want to mention it again because I think it, it goes to show how committed Moxie is to the 1v1 scene and how special that is as far as top players doing that. I think, you know, Really, there's no other comparison to somebody who is dedicated to ones like Moxie has with as much talent as he does have. And I think we should all appreciate him in the scene and his, his love for the 1v1 game. That's one of the reasons why I really didn't want to leave him out to dry today. Um, because I feel like I owe a good amount to Moxie. He's been around playing on the channel for a long time. So I wanted to make sure he got a chance to play in a competition. Now, right now... Moxie has not put a bucket on the board. Nupo has picked up right where he left off yesterday and is going to try and fully take Moxie down, I'm sure. The last time they played, it went to the very final game in a best of seven. Will that be the same thing today? Moxie is what, as he says, a best of seven player. He thinks over the course of seven games, he can figure out what's going wrong for him and make the right adjustments as opposed to a best of five, can sometimes slip out of his hands. But it's very clear that he's going to have to make adjustments the way the tournament, or not the tournament, but the match is going so far as Nupo has him on strings right now, pre-jumping behind the ball and dancing his way into a 5-0 lead. Moxie, a demo to convert on what should be his first goal, barring a collapse here around the net. That was one of the reasons why there was a bit of heat, I feel like, last time. Moxie was very physical in his gameplay against Nupo. I specifically remember him doing a ton of diving for demos after his first shot. You know, a lot of people do first shot and then look to steal boost and keep a long-term possession. Moxie was doing first shot into demo attempts because he felt he could catch players out of position. Nupo's going to demo right back, though. 6-1 in this game, number one. If you look back at Nupo's match history, 
it looks quite solid. I think his loss to Drally is one of the rare losses he does have. He had a loss to Zen as well, because I know he was performing so well against everyone. Maybe a win after beating TRK, and I think it was like a sweep on Johnny's stream. He had kind of checked almost every box and got a rematch against Zen, but that went in Zen's favor. Zen sitting on rank one on RL Duel GG for a reason. That was a great pre-flip. It looked like he was really just out of the play, and that's why Moxie felt like he could dive. But the pre-flip corrected for that. Strong shot from Moxie. Two minutes for him to try and make up five goals. Not an impossible task, but not an easy one. Moxie, did he score again? He did. Wow, what a quick shot out of the midfield. Dupo with 23 boost. Chips the ball down to the ground and dashes himself up so quickly. Once you have the ball on the opposite side of that defender, a lot of good things are going to happen for you. Sometimes even direct goals. Moxie, another kickoff win. Dupo in and out of the nets. And he has... A bit more boost to get up to this than Moxie does. Tried to beat him there, but only so much left in the tank. Still, possession for Moxie is fine. You know, he's playing from behind, but as long as he gets first possession off all these kickoffs... Oh my goodness, that was actually a really tough air dribble bump. That should not have worked. It ultimately didn't, but he did connect with Nupo. Then Nupo in and out of the net. Not often do you get away with that much separation on a bump. Now that goal probably had to go Moxie's favor. And the rest of the match had to be in his control. Moxie pogo shots. Right now just looking for style, I think, towards the end of the game. Dupo going to tap in in ninth. Wouldn't be terribly surprised to see if Moxie wanted to go next. But some players like to stay in lab. And say that not necessarily because six goals is, you know, impossible to come back from, but I think Boxy's pogo is a sign of his level of investment in this game. Dupo right now has been really controlled off of his saves. He's making saves from Moxie or making, you know, clears and then his recovery from it is so quick back to the ball that he's able to instantly end Moxie's offense. Moxie bodying him out of the boost in his back corner. How are Moxie's flicks today? This is going to be one of the tests. And that one looking just fine. Flicks it from a little bit closer than he normally does, so he can't go for that maximum power flick we see from him a ton. Instead, just the soft precision flick. So not a bad end to the game for Moxie going into the next one. And he's still not over, I guess, but the reset wave dash shot, bottom right. Moxie building confidence here late in the game. We have yet to see Drally Zen, Dupo Rawas, and Rawas TRK. So a lot of those are, you know, for for good reason. Uh, no, I don't know if it's a good reason, but one player in each of those matchups is somebody who doesn't seem to be very interested in playing a ton of ones right now. For the Drally Zen, it's Zen. For the Nupo Rawas, it's Rawas. And for the Rawas TRK, it's kind of both of them. <laughs> Game two, gonna need to be a regain for Moxie. But not so much a regain in the way the end of the game went. Looked fine in the final couple minutes. Just needs to stop Nupo from getting out five or six goals ahead, which is how he started the previous one. Moxie is fortunate that Nupo clips a little bit of a post on the way in because otherwise that would have just been a goal that Moxie couldn't get to. Counterattack is successful though. Dupo forced to just own goal. Yeah, we have a full tournament going on later today. This is a mistake.
that you can see if you watch the beginning of today's stream or beginning of the video to explain why. But hey, we're all winners at the end of the day. When you think about it, I should make more mistakes because we get more matches. Dupo, that flicked too high. Moxie did double jump for it, but not that much of a commit. The scoring is slowed down heavily here in game number two. Minute in, only a single goal. Moxie backing up. Moxie, when he's on his peak form, does often take the ball back and create as many ball carries as possible. Usually when his opponent allows to do them, he runs away with games. Right now, Nupo is going to be able to bring this back on target before the Moxie recovery. So it will be a tie game. Computer programmer struggles with time zones. It was day. It wasn't even wasn't even a time zone issue. I just I just said the wrong day. I said the word tomorrow, which wasn't true. Nupo reading the challenge and taking a two goal lead. We've seen for the first couple minutes, basically Moxie controlling the possession the whole time. The first time that Nupo is really able to get control, he is able to outplay Moxie as he turns to challenge. Now Moxie's definitely gonna go for the longer type possession here. He's not gonna go all in on the immediate shot. He just rolls the ball at Nupo. No reason to try and convert immediately when you can go steal the corner boost and play from a much more advantageous position. Moxie cannot force this into the top corner. But he is able to get back to this ball and demoed will convert for a goal. This is the way Moxie got, was getting so many demos before. It was actually on the chase out of the net. He would take a shot, it would get slightly cleared, and then he would come from behind in order to demo the person who was trying to transition to offense. Oxy setting up another flick. Oh, Nupo ungold it. That was actually off target. It needed Nupo's help, I believe, for it to go in. Unfortunately for him, I'm gonna watch it again just to confirm for sure. But yeah, I think that was crossbar and out. Dunked in by Nupo himself. Moxie searching for something from the ceiling, couldn't find it, but able to catch Nupo. Same way he always has on his retreat out of net. Nupo, can he get the read? He's actually gonna have to go for a double here. And Moxie was close to getting back. I have to watch this one again just to get a good idea of just how close Moxie was because Nupo had to go for the double. Oof. He had the help of the post, which helps a lot there. He could squeeze it off there to push it out. It's not gonna happen. Moxie bump. Double jumping to put Nupo into net. Besides that, he's going to prioritize a attack on the ball to keep Nupo pinned back over grabbing the boost, but that does result in Nupo escaping now. Pre-jumped by Moxie, and he got Nupo to get rid of the ball. Long shot's not going to be powerful enough. Nupo's actually trying to win the race to the corner, but he's not going to beat him there. Very intentional side flip pop that was mostly about getting himself to the corner before Moxie, but it didn't happen that way. Moxie gonna make it 5-3 on the follow-up. Dupo is air dribble. Sent to the ceiling, Moxie able to get to his own back corner. Another demo likely being searched for here. 
wonder if that forces Nupo to swing a bit wider than he otherwise would have since Moxie's caught him a couple times. Got Nupo to back off the ball. Now Nupo pre-jump that from Moxie's perspective, <laughs> that is some scary wall dashing. I say from Moxie's perspective it was easy, but hearing that coming up behind you, oh my goodness. <laughs> That was wild. He actually was fairly close to making it back. That was... Dude, that was menacing. <laughs> you think you have somebody beat, and you hear behind you just... Do, 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 of the, of the wall dashing coming back to get you. <laughs> oh, man. Dupo. Gonna get a quick goal off kickoff to keep himself within two. Yeah, I, I'm definitely missing my shot if I hear that coming. Like, oh no. <laughs> Do I actually need to put this hard? Is he actually going to make it back? Do I need to place it? Next thing you know, I'm just missing the net. Moxie, not going to win this race to the corner. 30 seconds and Nupo needs two. He'll take to the skies to play the quickest dribble possible. Moxie has done well with his pre-jump defense and is going to be able to clear this out, maybe secure the game. Moxie. Flick over the top of a defender who absolutely has to dive considering the game context. I really like these wall dashes from Nupo, man. They are looking clean. It is not going to be long before we see an absolutely absurd play from him because of them. But a tied series in a rivalry that we would expect nonetheless. One to one in a best of seven. As we start with game number three here in Moxie versus Nupo, I do want to talk about something that I think has been mostly a result of the increased popularity of the stream. First off, one second, Moxie might absolutely pop off here. Nupo into the Octane as well is the big adjustment for this game. But that is, especially these big matches, these big rivalry matches, there's always more people that show up to watch, which of course, I always appreciate everybody who comes out. But there's almost always an increased level of toxicity as well. And I hope you guys know that this is stuff that the players do see and do you know take note of. And I hate to see any player feel like they maybe can't play or don't want to play on stream because of you know the way that the fans treat them and the reality of it is that it's getting noticed it gets noticed by players and they can you know it affects them in ways that i wish it, it didn't have to and the reason i i can get around that stuff when you mess with me but i don't appreciate when chat messes uh with everybody else and so you know, there's nothing we could do. I could sit here and tell you guys right now that, hey, let's let's stop, you know, let's stop the hate towards either one of these players. But the reality is the people who are around here a lot, the people who are watching the YouTube videos, they're, they're probably not the people doing it anyways. It's the people right on the edge of the fandom who come in just to hate and uh, leave a mark on the players, which it just, it bums me out beyond belief. So, I, uh... I want to encourage and I try to at all times, you know, stream with a pretty positive light, I feel like. I'm never one to try and invite hate, but it, it just, it's going to happen. Unfortunately, it's just going to happen when, you know, when we get streams that people want to watch more of. You know, the, the bigger games we get, the more people are going to want to show up, the more people who maybe, you know, are, are willing to just fire insults and maybe get banned because... This is the only stream they've ever been to. But I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't know where I'm headed with this. I just hate the idea of hearing from anybody who plays on my stream. You know, hey, I, I might not want to play. Everybody always just hates on me, you know, when I play, which I don't think anybody has ever done anything to deserve that level of, um, you know, thought. First off, this might be a wall dash goal by Nupo. It is going to be. But anyways, you guys get my point. And if, uh, if you ever really enjoy a player playing on a stream or, you know, getting involved in ones, reach out. Tell them you like them. Tell them you're a fan of, of their gameplay because I think 
people appreciate that too. And that's really the only thing we can do. Try and discourage people from getting too heated. And um, just enjoy the one's gameplay. Anyways, nothing nothing happened as for a... Nothing, nothing happened specifically. But the reality is that players take note of, of hate that is given around, you know, in this 1v1 community. Like I said, I don't think it's by anybody who watches this a ton. A anybody who appreciates the players and the game planners deep in the scene, I don't, I don't think anybody's doing that. It's just people on the edge who I think come in and, you know, throw some hate quick and leave. But So, so they're never going to hear this message anyways, but I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, my point was hopefully slightly made, and we will head back to gameplay. It's a loud minority. Yeah, that, that's a great way to put it. It's it's a loud minority, and it's the same thing for all content creators, too. I think, you know, you get hate, and it's just somehow, it's just the human brain just allows it to be way louder than it should be. You can get a, a thousand loving comments, and one guy goes, I don't know, you're not that good. And all of a sudden, you're like, actually, maybe I am not that good. Anyways, Moxie's popping off right now. You know who is that good? It's Moxie. This is a great reset double into the crossbar. He started off down. He's working his way back in this game, number three. Sorry to any of the great gameplay in the first three minutes of this match. But <laughs> luckily there's more gameplay to be had and to commentate on as Nupo wins another kickoff and basically does exactly to Moxie what he just did to him. Moxie faking the flick. Nupo such a high respect for the carry dribble game of Moxie. Moxie, this time dunked early. Yupo doesn't want to find out what the end result of that dribble is. Yupo, so beautiful in air. I just don't know how to describe it. It's just... He's like a ballerina, the way he's dancing around. Specifically, I think it's the reversal of the way he was spinning. Spinning one way after the reset, stopping, turning around back the other way. He has full control. He's got a 7-4 lead. Oh my goodness, Nupo. Okay, we get it, man. <laughs> You're good at those wall dashes. Moxie, he loves to shoot top left. Players who play against him should know by now. Yupo covers it again. Will Moxie just shoot to the same exact place? No, he is going to try and switch the other way, and it's going to be a goal. Just goes to show how he doesn't have to shoot his best flicks ever to the opposite side of the net because players are so used to that top left corner. You see Nupo actually even creeping up the sidewall, prepping to make that top left corner save where Moxie puts it the majority of the time. Yupo kickoff win. Seemed like maybe he's going to go for a double jump bump. Moxie attacking back to the ball. Somehow the ball squeezes perfectly vertically. Now he's going to go for his double jump bump and it's going to connect. Much more reliable than the kind of double jump bump we saw from him earlier. Where he tried to fall all the way from the ceiling ahead of the ball. Old Fear never had toxic viewers. You know what's interesting is that that is true. And... That's because we were streaming to like 20 people. Uh, in fact, one of the things that I always felt as Nupo, that's actually a big miss with 30 seconds left to go. Moxie doesn't have a lot of boost to work with. I don't know if that fake challenge from Mox from Nupo, which wasn't even really much of a fake challenge. He was just setting up his shadow, but it got Moxie to flick it. He really needed to just keep that carry longer. He's outplayed Nupo here on the back wall, though. Long shot is ahead of Nupo, but the save is there off the post. Moxie did not stick around. I think there's a world in which he just sticks around to see 
if Nupo's save isn't good enough and follow it up instead of going to grab boost. Grabbing boost is much more of a long-term type play. He needs to get underneath this ball. And it's just ahead of him. So Nupo will take game number three in a best of seven. Game number four. But the reason why, you know, we didn't have toxic viewers or toxic people in the past is because we didn't, we just had way less people. And specifically, when you're like a smaller creator, I know people, it just doesn't, nobody wants to be angry about you. Maybe it's because they're not jealous or I, I, I don't know what it is, but people are very, very nice to you almost exclusively when starting out. And as soon as you have a little bit of success, that's when the toxic people show up. So I knew even when I was starting, I knew that was the case. And I was like, everybody's being really, really nice to me. And that's how I know I haven't actually had success yet. Once I once I have start people hating on me, saying fear is the worst, saying give us back old fear, that's when I know. That's when I know something must be going right because the haters have arrived. But unfortunately, that means that these guys who are absolutely doing stuff right, the best in the game, no doubt about it, they have success, means the haters are going to show up. And the more fans the more players you beat who have, who are a fan's favorite player, I don't know if I'm saying that right, the more hate you're going to get. And Moxie has beaten a lot of fans' favorite players. Old Fear would gift 500 subs. No, he wouldn't. You guys are just lying. <laughs> Give us back five FPS Fear. I can't, you can't possibly want that. Can you send the replay of the best of seven on Liquipedia or where you want? You want the in-game replays? So I, I've, I haven't, I don't usually upload the in-game replays anywhere. And then one of the few times that I decided, ah, screw it, you know, I'll upload it to, uh, so that everybody can have it. Immediately, someone released a video of the games on YouTube before I had released my video of the same match. And I was like, really? Can't we all just agree that we shouldn't do that at least? So whatever, it's just easier. It, it, to be honest, it's also just additional work to go upload them. So, it, you know, lazy fear would just not do it anyways. But then when I have done it, people basically take the video, which is like, come on. Old fear would have internet issues. True, I did have internet issues in the biggest match I had ever had. Daniel Joria's was probably the worst internet issues and the biggest match up until that point. That was devastating. Boxy faking the flick to freeze Nupo a bit and then still saving that flip for the wave dash 50. Do you have a VOD of the 24 hour subathon? I think so. I think that's on the additional channel. I have the Fear Plus channel. I think I uploaded the full thing, or maybe only 12 hour videos are allowed or something. So maybe I uploaded it in two chunks. But I think that exists somewhere. Oxy. Playing from behind again. Not able to find any sort of counterattack from his own half. Nupo is just his own Nupo self. Top speed, dashing like crazy. Seemed like he had absolutely no plan of what he was going to do with the ball there. And ultimately got no shot from it. But so often does that just end up working out. Moxie Flick has Nupo sent into net. But has been the case... All series long, Nupo's recovery is so quick. And he is out back to the ball before Moxie can keep possession. But Moxie's double jump will tie the game. Do players like Sparkles or do they run with Bacchus mod? I think they like Sparkles. I know Chronic has like an alpha boost placebo. 
pretty sure he will not play Alpha Boost because he thinks he plays worse with it, I think. So he plays Sparkles. Moxie trying to take an immediate shot off the kickout possession and Nupla just all over him, just still diving on top of him, trying to chase him down. Moxie finally earns himself a moment to breathe and no surprise that he keeps popping the ball every time Nupo slightly turns in the direction of his car because Nupo has definitely established that he will dive at any moment. Moxie though, this is a real opportunity with some space and it's another fake flick. Low 50. Has himself tied with a minute 40. Nupo, direct kickoff win. Cashing it in. You honestly have been looking for the channel for forever, thinking it was Rocket League channel and trying to watch it there. Glad you finally found it. Wait, you've been looking for... Wait, what channel? My channel? Moxie, a kickoff goal right back in his favor. Lupo was doing his best to make it not be a kickoff loss, but Moxie able to get that boost and wave dash the ball for a nice tie game. And Moxie actually gonna extend the lead now as Nupo dives into his corner. Moxie was slowly walking it in. He was willing to waste time if Nupo was gonna come back, but I can't imagine Nupo letting go of his controller. He's probably just gonna speed around for fun. Going for a pinch, he sees Moxie trying to steal his back corner boost. And thought maybe he could punish him for being on the wrong side of the ball with a full field pinch. And it honestly would have worked if he found the power he wanted. Moxie is going to try and waste as much time as possible. He sees Nupo going away, so he is just going to stop the ball. And wait for him to come back. Every moment is precious here at the end of the game. Very smart play there from Moxie. And if you see the ball hit the ground at zero seconds, with Nupo on the edge of being able to tie the game. Don't forget that moment where Moxie starved him out of just a couple more seconds. And now Nupo has a good opportunity. Oh, and it's so pure. Just seems like Moxie, or sorry, like Nupo could never miss from those positions when you see him hit one. As Merrick, thank you for the 15 months. And Major, thank you for the bits as well. Dupo has 10 seconds to get one goal. This matchup delivering just like it did last time. But Moxie, who showed earlier he's willing to end the game. Oh, that, that's content, baby. That's content. Moxie. <laughs> you can, Moxie's the man. <laughs> that is content right there. How can you hate? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Game number five. This is not the end of the series, though. As we have a full best of seven, Nupo hopping out of the match, probably because he wanted to get out of the Octane and into the Vitality Fennec. He loves to rock this Cheetah Prince. I've seen him rock it a few different times. And we'll see if it will help or hurt him today. Nupo undercutting Moxie as a way to try and finish off this kickoff, but it wasn't enough. Undercutting him again. Does prevent him from getting back to the goal to make a save, but he needed to give it one more touch as well in order for it to finish off and convert. Moxie, wow. 
This is impressive precision on the respawn of Nupo. He actually has a ton covered. But Moxie puts it right in to the crossbar and down. He is looking like Nupo did in game number one. We started off this series and it was just all Nupo running up the score. Moxie trying to do a little bit of that here in this pivotal game five. Nupo into his back corner. Are we going to see a full field dribble? That is can't miss content normally from Nupo, but this one actually not on target. And nothing comes out of it. Moxie attacking the other way, has the ball in the perfect position, and you know that you messed up if you're shadowing away from Moxie, and he is carrying the ball. Most of the time, you can just notch up the goal for Moxie. Nupo stayed consistent in his kickoff strategy of even when he seemingly has lost them, he does not give up on the play and he just tries to make his 16 boost work. He says, I know I can find a goal somehow. And this is one of the ways how Moxie could not get up to stop the perfect air roll shot. Nupo. Gonna make it two. Is Moxie going wave dash kickoff here? He is. He's just getting it forced all the way over the top of him. It's hard to find that perfect height on the wave dash. You want to be low enough such that you can get sent right back down to the ground and wave dash quickly, but I imagine too low and might get the ball pushed over the top of you. Dupo. Although I think Moxie actually might have been too high because it pushed the top of his car up. Either way. Nupo sees the early challenge from Moxie. Moxie trying to use his flip to stay floating behind the play. Nupo soft front flip. He chased Moxie off the ball. We weren't watching from Nupo's perspective, but he had zero boost. He was trying to cash in on basically chasing Moxie out of position by following him there in the corner and it seemed really scorable. I'd have to go back and see from Nupa's perspective to see how awkward it was for him to try and get the angle because there's no question that awkward car angle aside, the net was very much open. 6-3 now for Moxie. As is the 1v1 world, it would be Perfect, or not perfect, but it would be exactly as what we uh, would expect to see Moxie beat Nupo after getting last in Fear Fest Jr. and Nupo winning it. The 1v1 world never allows you to settle on who the best players are. It insists on switching it up on you constantly. And Moxie only halfway there in this game, but up four. Still has another one to win, even if he does win this one. Nupo's not giving up by any means. Moxie, late use of the flip. Wide of the net. The counterattack should be unreachable. I think it would take a bit of a miracle for Nupo to not be able to get it past him. He's got two minutes and 20 seconds. A couple kickoff goals can make that time Seem like more than enough as Nupo tries to convert quickly. Locking in on Moxie, deciding not to bump him. You could see there, he locks into him, is thinking about bumping, and then very clearly decides, you know what, no. I don't think it's going to favor me to bump him now because they're both at zero boost, and it's not necessarily going to work out for him. Instead, he'll back off the ball, and he'll demo him later and use that as his opportunity to get his fifth goal. Great kickoff win for Nupo. 
Moxie gonna try and challenge from the ceiling. Nupo instant resets. Moxie gets back. Wow. Did Moxie... He didn't get a flip off Nupo, right? He just got bumped back. But either way, he gets to the ball before Nupo. That would be insane if he got a reset. I don't think he got a reset off of him, right? It's possible to get a reset. I think he just reacted to the bump a little bit better. Nupo. A minute 30, no boost. Doesn't mean he's going to back down. Moxie flicky to the left. As is his style. Dupo attacking back with speed. Oh my goodness, what a save from Moxie. A well-earned goal. That was about as good as the placement gets from Nupo. And Moxie just pins it off the crossbar. Such a fast recovery too. Wave dashing off the inside of his wall. Getting that reset back by landing on the sidewall and then using it immediately to flip as he falls off of it. That's what makes him win that race. And now he's going for the pinch. Moxie is pretty good at these. It's on target and it's in! Moxie! He's in the zone and it's enough to make Nupo want to go next. He was going to try and chase him down and maybe challenge him early or grab the midfield boost. But man, 111 kilometer per hour off the bounce. A great win for Moxie. And that puts him on match points in this best of seven. We got a one minute ad before we head to game six. Hurricane, thank you for the prime. Had to avoid the ads. Anybody who's new to the channel, just so you know, I will never let you guys miss any actual content with ads. You know, if an ad is going to be forced to autoplay, I'll always put it in between the games for you guys. That being said, the prime is the best way to get rid of ads as well, in case you don't want to watch ads in the in-between screens. Dupo. Gonna boom his long shots. He's out of the Vitality Fennec and into a more standard Mina Fennec. One that is notoriously given power to all Mina players. Dupo pinching this one away. Really has just a defensive mechanism. He's not expecting to be able to score off it, but he needs the ball to not be easily controlled by Moxie. So he just puts a bunch of power on it to buy himself some time to retreat to the midfield and grab boost. Dupo, can he get this ahead of Moxie? He can. Are we headed to another game seven in this absolute masterclass of a matchup? Dupo. Oh, I was about to compliment his save. I thought he was going to try and pinch it off. I want to watch it again to see if he could have saved it easier or if he specifically wanted... No, I think he's just trying his best to save it. Or if he specifically wanted a crossbar pinch. Because I do think that a lot of players have moved to a place where they're willing to specifically save off of the woodwork in order to get better clears as opposed to just saving it off the backboard, which is very often just followed up shortly after for a goal for the opposition. Dupo undercutting Moxie to try and disrupt him, maybe get a demo, but does not Moxie too high of an air dribble. Made it possible for Nupo to get around. Needs to keep those a bit lower. Oh, wow, what a save. <laughs> Moxie doubling it off of his post. Dupo wave dashing or faking a wave dash attack at Moxie. And you've seen so many early flicks because of that. He does not want the ball taken right off the top of his car. Single jump fake by Moxie. As soon as he recognizes there's a bit of separation, he turns around and uses that flip for a wave dash to recover. It's just such quick thinking. And now... Because he played it so smart, able to prevent Nupo from getting a good opportunity and will launch a flick into the top left.
Gupo. Interesting touch to the side wall. The reason why is because, I guess because you get demoed too, but it doesn't seem as easy to control to push the ball all the way out, especially slightly behind the midfield boost where he has to go to the midfield boost and then turn around and slow down, which I was saying because you wouldn't be able to set up an easy dribble, but it looks like another good reason is because you're going to slow down and make yourself demoable. So I was expecting Nupo to take a more direct path to the side wall, maybe in the back corner. And have him start his dribble from there. Instead, he is now down three straight goals for Moxie. And the flick over the top of the early challenge, which is what Moxie was hoping for, didn't work out that way. Instead, Lacking some power and hands the ball right over to Nupo. I was thinking about having Nupo play apparently Jack since they both won the respective tournaments. Jack might be interested. I haven't asked him yet. But that would, the reason, actually, you know what? No, I thought about it. I already thought about it. I just didn't think about it for two more seconds before mentioning it on stream, which is that Jack's in Texas and he, uh, at least right now, he can't do it because it'd be like 100 and. 15, 20 ping for him on EU or something. Boxy, that's a great cut. That's a great dribble cut. You love to see these work too. These have been around since the beginning of 1v1 days. Everybody remembers Gambit with the ball on top of his car. Absolutely slicing and dicing. Flakes also loves himself a good power slide cut. And Moxie using it to his advantage. There is that lower air dribble bump. Some people, I think I saw in chat talking about, you know, he's a one trick pony. It's the only move he has. You should be instead criticizing Nupo for allowing Moxie to get to positions where he can so easily air dribble bump because nowadays a lot of defenders will turn an attack and be, you know, much more active in defense in order to not set those perfect scenarios up. Once upon a time in 1v1, it was not a bad idea to just kind of sit shadow very passively and very like, far away from the play and look to just defend off of the shot attempts that your opponent found. That is not the case anymore. The air dribble bump has you know, erased your ability to rely on that because it's so it's effective. This is a really great shot from Nupo. Side flipping underneath the ball off the kickoff in order to launch it away out of Moxie's grasp, picks up the corner boost, and makes it back to the ball before it hits the ground. Absolutely beautiful play. And one that he desperately needs here with a minute 20 left to go. As he has to win this game to force game seven. It's gonna be an air dribble from Nupo. The resets over the top of Moxie. Moxie off the kickoff, forced back into his net. And he played this extremely passively. There's another reason why you can't do it. Not just because of the air dribble bumps, but also because players will outplay you if you let them. Nupo, that's a great win. It's going to be a tie game. I wouldn't have it any other way. 1v1 fans everywhere rejoice as Nupo makes sure to keep it close and potentially give us a game seven. Foxy definitely going to try and punish here. What well, is a very aggressive play from Nupo. I'm sure his eyes light up a little bit when he sees Nupo there. He said, did he really follow me into the corner with zero boost off the kickoff? That is going to be really hard for him to make work. I'm sure that's what's going on in Moxie's head and proving that's the case shortly after by retaking the lead. Moxie. What could be a massive kickoff win here late. Slows the ball down to a halt and backflips it over the top of Nupo. He says, I will not flick until you challenge. You have to come meet the ball. And then I'll just play keep away and follow it up for a goal. Huge kickoffs about to happen here for Nupo. And we've seen him win a couple direct ones before. Here he is off the backboard. Very important touch there that Moxie didn't get over the top of him. He has boost to work with. Moxie is more than willing to waste time in the game. He's going to cut the ball across the entire length of the field multiple times, but he did just hand the ball over. Now it's Moxie in defense against a Nupo air dribble at ceiling height. The reset. The double is bumped off of it. He was on target to double. 
but Moxie stops him from doing so, and it's GG's from Nupo. He is going to stop the goal, but it doesn't matter. Nupo has already conceded the win. And this is what the 1v1 world does to you. As soon as you start to get a read on who might be the best player, the 1v1 world corrects you. Moxie will take the win. 4-2 against Nupo in a $500 best of seven. Back to the cliffs. Yeah. Yeah, Moxie was cliff jumping today. Now he can leave with a little bit more cash. Maybe go meet his friends up for dinner.